Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becca and if you're new here, this is my channel where I talk about all the houseplant things. And if you're returning, welcome back. So for the last two years, I have done a plant funeral video, which is basically a video where I go through all of the plants that have died this year. It's kind of like the Spotify recap, except not as fun. <laughs> I do this as an attempt to document the things that I'm learning about with my plants and also just to normalize killing plants and not having every single plant we own be beautiful and perfect because I hate to break it to you, but if all of your plants are perfect and beautiful right now, that probably will not be a thing forever. And it's important that we continue to normalize these things because it can be very easy to feel like you're the only person with brown tips, brown edges, you're the only person that kills your plants. It's just not true. I have been collecting houseplants for a few years now. I've been making videos about houseplants for a few years now, and I still make these mistakes all the time. So like I always do, I looked back at my Instagram feed to see which plants I posted about and we're talking about on Instagram that are no longer with us. And this year, <laughs> I always feel like I'm not gonna have that many and then I really start looking. And this year, I actually didn't find that many in my feed, but something that I realized is I post about basically like the same 10 plants, like every single time I post. So I really need to be better about diversifying my feed. <laughs> But I started looking through my stories this time because I only found like four or five plants from my feed that didn't make it. And I did find a few more from my stories. So you'll have to forgive the bad screenshots from my stories, but it will help to paint the picture if you can actually see the plant. You might actually remember when I talked about it in my stories or you might have the plant yourself. So without further ado, Welcome to my plant funeral. Let's remember all of my dead plants. <laughs> okay, so the first plant that I wanna talk about is basically just watermelon peperomia in general. And I have a little propagation that I will show on the screen of my watermelon pe peperomia that did not make it. And the reason that this one did not make it is because I dropped it, which is very sad and very unfortunate. I did have other watermelon peperomia propagations going, so I do still have one. Somehow it made it through the move. It's not looking incredible, <laughs> but it's still with us somehow, so it didn't make the list of plants that I've killed, but this one definitely did. And this one I was really sad about because this is the propagation that probably looked the best and the cutest out of all of them. It did grow a little bit bigger beyond the point that this photo was taken, and it was just, it was so perfect and it worked out so well and then I dropped it and things just went downhill really fast. I didn't think that I was a person who dropped my plants a ton because I am generally very careful with them, but then I look back at these videos and I'm like even st like sitting here filming this video right now and I'm like, oh, that died because I dropped it. Like, who whose butterfingers are these? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just so embarrassing. <laughs> Okay, the next plant that I wanna talk about today is this Anthurium clarinervium. And yeah, I'm gonna be transparent, it didn't make it. You can see that it has so many leaves on it. This was a plant that I imported from Indonesia. Um, it was my first ever import video and it's like massively popular if you wanna go check that out. Um, but I was so happy about this plant and then it lived for a very long time. I'll admit, but it never put out a new leaf and it just consistently lost more leaves, more leaves, more leaves, more leaves <laughs> until there were no leaves left. And then I beheaded the last leaf and I put it in a humid place and that has worked for other anthurium like my anthurium regale. It completely came back from the dead and it put out a new leaf. It has yet to put out another leaf since then, but it put out a leaf nonetheless. And so I thought that I would be able to do the same thing with this one and I was not able to. So I ended up like pulling it up, like just out and it completely detached from the roots. So there's that, but also my my other Anthurium clarinervium that I currently have, I recently repotted and saved it from like early onset root rot, and it's not exactly doing incredible. It's still hanging on, but I feel like, I feel like I'm gonna lose the plant. So if that shows up in the 2021 plant funeral, I'm not gonna be surprised. I will be very, very sad, but I will not be surprised. But I got that plant about a year ago, and it's it's been doing really great up until the point where I realized it might have root rot, and then lo and behold, it had like early onset root rot. So hopefully I caught it in time. I made an IGTV video about that if you wanna go check my Instagram. 
Uh, I don't do IGTV a ton, so it should be towards the top. My philodendron brantiatum. Now listen, this is a plant that pretty much from the start of me having it, I was over it. And it, mostly because it's such a diva. It is such a diva. And it immediately started putting out like the tiniest leaves. It's one of those plants that I am obviously starstruck by because it's so beautiful. I love the silver foliage, but at the same time, I don't like plants that are that high maintenance. And for it being like basically a silver Hartley philodendron, I was like, you have no right or reason to be acting like this. <laughs> like it is just, it's this plant that you see right here, except silver, the same thing. So I was just like, no, this isn't gonna work for me. And I held on to it for quite a long time, but I brought it with me when I moved and then it just didn't make it. Like it had been on its last leg for like six months and then the move just like really did it in for it. So a lot of the plants that I'm sharing today died because I moved or in the process of the move. I really, really tried to save a lot of my plants and be very careful with them. But honestly, there were a lot that didn't make it and I'm not upset about it. Anyway, with all of that being said, the philodendron brantiatum did not make it. If I find it in a big box store or at a nursery or something here, I would probably rebuy it for a good price. But honestly, it's one of those plants that I feel is kind of overrated because it has no business being as picky as it is. Okay, so along with the peperomia that I mentioned earlier, all of my Pilea peperomioides are dead, <laughs> all of them. So the Pilea peperomioides was one of my first plants ever, and I purchased my first Pilea from a friend in Tucson, and it grew so good, like massively well. I was shocked, and it grew so many babies, constantly putting off babies, and this entire like Pilea salad bowl that you're seeing is actually a product of that original mother plant. And then all of a sudden, like I last year, I came back from my honeymoon and it had fallen over and like snapped. And then from there, it was just never the same plant. You know, I don't know what happened exactly, but yeah, so I had the stump of that plant for a really long time, just hoping that it would put out big babies and it didn't. And I don't even remember if I brought it with me when I moved or I might've thrown it away before I moved. I feel like I didn't bring it because it was basically just like a stump with like three really tiny babies that weren't doing anything. And then also this salad bowl just died like one by one and it just didn't work out. And that was before I moved actually. So I reused the pot for one of my cacti and I have not looked back. Would I buy it again? Yes, because I had them for a long time and they're super easy plants to take care of. It's just once they start going downhill, they like really go downhill and it's super hard to fix it. This is one that I did not think that I would necessarily be reporting on, but I had a bunch of golden pothos cuttings in water in my kitchen and it was honestly like one of my favorite things ever. So I'm really sad about this actually. My mom got me this like extra large propagation station, which I always get questions about where it's from. I don't even think my mom remembers where she got it from and I can't find anything that big in any stores, but you can definitely find tube propagation stations like on Etsy or Amazon or wherever you wanna shop for that. You can definitely find them online. I don't know if you'll be able to find them as big as mine, but they're out there, so anyway. This was just full of them. And it was full of actually even some of my first plants I ever had. I took them out of soil and I put them in water and they were just going crazy. So I'm really sad about that. They didn't make it like towards the end of living in my old apartment. I don't really know what happened, but they all just started developing root rot like pretty bad while they were in the water, even though they had never done that before. And I was pretty consistent about changing out the water, but maybe I didn't do it often enough. I'm not really sure what happened. So if you have plants that have lived in water for a really, really long time, maybe you can weigh in if this has ever happened to you before and what you did. This is a Raphidophora decursiva, and it is one of those plants that I wanted so bad until I got it and I saw it and I was like, oh, I guess it's cool, but it's not like what I thought it would be. I think that the decursivas are like way cooler when they're really big, but at the same time, they kind of just look like, I don't know, like, crazy cool monsteras or like a palm tree. I don't think that they necessarily look like, 
I don't know, it wasn't super appealing to me, I guess I should say. And then it started to die, like, quickly. So I don't remember, like, I really don't remember what happened to it. I think that the leaves were just like constantly curling. I might have featured it. Oh yeah, I did feature it in my first ever plant clinic video. So if you want to go look at that, that's another series on my channel. The leaves were constantly curling and then I opened up the pot and I saw that the soil was probably too well draining. So then I put it in a soil that was a little bit different and it got worse. And then I took it out and it had root rot and then I put it in moss and then it got stem rot or something weird. And then it just got really bendy and it was clearly dead. So I don't really know why it had such a tumultuous end. I feel like in past videos, I was like, I don't know why the plant suddenly started dying. And now with the knowledge that I have, I'm like, you're so stupid. It had a pest. <laughs> but now I knew about pests this year. I promise. There were many years in plant parenthood where I was like, I've never had a pest. What are you talking about? Uh, I have had pests and a lot of them, especially spider mites. This has been the year of the spider mite. You know what I mean? This was the first year that I like fully understood what spider mites were. And I've made videos about that. Lots of them. So if you want to hear just about spider mites, you can go check those out. Sometimes plants just have an agenda and it's not to live. <laughs> and I have to be okay with that sometimes. But it's extra sad when it's a plant that I really like. Quick honorable mention, this bear paw succulent died for literally no reason other than it just felt like it. So speaking of that entire situation, yeah, all the other plants in this planter were like literally thriving, other succulents were doing so well, and then all of a sudden this one was just like, bye. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, this plant, I have the botanical name on the vi on the picture here because I always forget, but this is a plant that <laughs> I, I let this one die, um, which I'm now I'm upset with myself about because it would have looked so cool hanging in this room. Like I feel like that is the purpose of a plant like this. Like it looks so cool when it's hanging. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of kicking myself for this, but what happened was this plant was hanging in our moving truck and we forgot to put it down on the ground and so throughout the drive it fell and it was super heavy because it was a big plant and it crushed like one entire planter box full of cacti which were some of my like most prized cactus so i was really upset and so when i saw it i just kind of like disassociated from the plant and stopped caring about it as if the plant wanted to fall and kill its brothers like i don't know why my my mind went there but basically i let it sit outside here in missouri and it was doing like pretty well for a while and then i just it got really yellow and then i was like okay you're dead finally you deserve this you killed all my cactus <laughs> which is super immature so don't roast me in the comments i know that was really stupid but i don't know why i just immediately disassociated from the plant once i saw that it fell on everything and killed a lot of stuff listen i had this hoya bella for like a total of i don't know a month and i'm really good with hoyas like i don't want to like jinx it so let me like knock on wood but like i'm pretty good with hoyas and for some reason hoyas with like really thin stems it's just not it for me i'm actually shocked that i've had the hoya linearis for so long i've had it for almost a year now and it has grown quite a bit but usually hoyas with like the thin stems it just doesn't go well and probably because they have more needs than like the thick stem thick leaf hoyas but anyway the hoya bella is one of those that i heard is like one of the easiest house plants you could ever have so i was like all for it very excited and then i got it and it put out so many peduncles like it was ready to bloom i was so excited and then it didn't bloom and then it died <laughs> and it could have been because of spider mites or it could have been because i put it outside <laughs> but i don't know i really don't know what happened there it just didn't make it so i'm not sad about it i don't really plan on buying another hoya bella but now that i'm thinking about it they are very pretty but i just don't know if it's like prettier than other foliage like the hartley philodendron or even pothos like i don't I think pothos is prettier than 
Ahoya Bella, honestly. Okay, and the last plant that I wanna talk about today and the most recent death is my booby cactus. So I've already replaced it <laughs> because I have the booby cactus hookup at In Bloom Plant Co. She always has booby cactus. But for some reason, I was, you know, it's been sitting on the shelf for a while. It wasn't in super direct sun, but I was showing it in my pottery video, okay? So it was perfectly healthy, totally normal. I looked back at the footage and it looked great. And then I came Came in literally two days later and it was completely shriveled up like this well not exactly like this it was more like you know in a cactus shape but completely shriveled up and like juicy and I had not watered it since we arrived because obviously like I know how to care for cactus you don't need to water them very often this and that you know and yeah I was shocked like I actually got a little emotional because I was like what because usually when plants die you have a little bit of a warning like you at least have like a few weeks to like watch it die or like try to fix it but it was literally within like 48 hours it was completely dead and i have no idea why even to this date it was so dead that i wouldn't have even been able to like look at the cause of death you know what i mean i have no idea what happened but i did order a replacement and i got it a few weeks ago so it's over here and more sun now so hopefully that will I don't know, keep it happy. I, I don't know what happened before, but I do plan on planting it in one of my cactus boxes. I need to switch out the soil in one of the boxes so that the plants will, I don't know, continue to be happy and make it through this Missouri winter because God knows it's gonna be hard on all of us. <laughs> So yes, this is my uh, this is my plant funeral video for 2020. You know, I mean, all jokes aside, like I didn't want to really play up the death jokes too much because we're in the middle of a global pandemic where a lot of people have died, and that's so so serious. And I never want to take away from that. So I just want you to know that upfront that this is a series that I've been doing for a long time, and I do it for reasons other than making fun of death because I don't think the death is funny. Um, but if you are someone who's lost a loved one due to COVID or just other reasons during this time, I'm, my heart is with you, I'm thinking about you. And I think that there's a lot that we can learn from our plants every single year. And I hope that at the end of the year season, you're able to look back at your collection in 2020 and look at how much you've grown as a plant parent and also look at what your plants have taught you. If you are just now getting into plants due to COVID and all of these things, welcome. You know, I wanna give you a warm welcome. I'm sure that you've already been warmly welcomed, but if you haven't, this is it. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching this video. I definitely do have a little bit more end of the year content coming out, but I wanted to do this one for sure because it's one of my favorite videos that I get to film every year. I will have last year's video and the year before that linked down below for you if you wanna check that out. If you're not already, you can subscribe to my channel for videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Sometimes I miss a day because I'm human but it's usually every Tuesday and Thursday. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you and I will see you next time. Bye.